Hello and welcome everyone to building and maintaining a LinkedIn profile. My name is Nick and I will be your instructor for this online workshop. Today we're going to be talking about the LinkedIn platform, the platform you can see right there on your screens right now, and all of its benefits, how to use it, how to build it, and all of the other tools that LinkedIn has to offer. But what exactly is LinkedIn uh, before I really get into everything? Well, like I said, you're looking at the website right now. We can see it is a form of social media like Facebook or uh, Twitter, for example. Um, and I most akin it to Facebook. I usually like to describe people who are unaware of it as professional Facebook. So if you think of Facebook where that is where people go to post things for their friends and their family and they talk about their personal lives and their you know vacations they're going on or things they're doing or whatever they might be doing. It's all about their personal life. It's all just for their own enjoyment. LinkedIn is the same idea except for your professional life. So as opposed to posting pictures of your friends, family, and things of that nature, you're posting things about your career, volunteer work you might be doing, education you're getting, so on and so forth. And what really is the purpose of this website? Why do we need it? Is it just another, you know, social media platform for all of us to go and uh, meet up and, you know, talk about things or complain about things, whatever? Well, not exactly. LinkedIn is much more of a self-marketing tool than anything else in this context, especially when it comes to job seekers. It really is the most beneficial job searching tool. I read somewhere not too long ago that LinkedIn is much less of a uh, very good option to take hold of and much more of a requirement for job seekers nowadays. So we certainly want to take advantage of this platform. And the reason why this, the reason why it is a self-marketing tool in the first place is that recruiters, about 70% of them or so, uh, use social media like LinkedIn to screen their applicants. And there's nothing better than having that great first step forward with the LinkedIn profile uh, to impress a recruiter when they do so. So you definitely want to have a LinkedIn profile uh, with any regard. And we'll see some other reasons as to why having a LinkedIn profile is very important as well. Some other things I want to go over before we actually dive too deeply into the website there are some statistics about the website. First and foremost, there are over 630 million people on this platform. That is a huge number for any social media site alone, but when it comes to LinkedIn, think about how that breaks down to the state level and here in the United States, or even the area level, Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, that is still a significant amount of people in our area on this platform. And what's even more interesting about that 630 million figure is that 40% of that number are people who are in decision-making positions, people who can hire those people for their companies. And again, break that down to our area, that's still a lot of people who are on this platform, who are the ones making those hiring decisions. So there's a lot of reasons for that as to why we want to be in LinkedIn and interact with those people in some way, shape, or form. LinkedIn themselves also find that 70% of their LinkedIn members find a job or some sort of opportunity through one of their other members, through a friend of theirs, or as LinkedIn calls them, a connection on the platform. And so that's really great to hear in itself. You know, networking is a super important thing that we will discuss a little bit more in just a second here. Um, but the, due to the fact that just having this profile boosts our chances to get a job through one of our friends on this platform, that's even great enough to hear. Another great reason why it's to hear is that 85% of jobs generally are filled through networking. So what does that statistic actually mean? So you've, you might have heard that before, 85% of jobs are filled through networking. What does that exactly mean? Well, think of all the jobs that are posted, all those jobs you might find on Indeed, all the jobs you might find on Monster, ZipRecruiter, or even LinkedIn's website itself. You know, millions and millions and millions of jobs only encompass that other 15% of jobs not included in that 85% figure. Because all the jobs that um, are in that 85% figure were filled through some sort of networking opportunity. I mean, think about any time through your life you heard your friends and family say, you know, I got this job because my brother works there or my college classmate works there or my friend from another job now works there. You know, they all knew someone to get into that role some way or the other, whether it was a direct, hey, you know, come talk to my boss now or, hey, apply for this job and I'll mention that you did, whatever it might be, that's 85% of networking right there. And it's really a statistic that job seekers want to take advantage of. So certainly in your job search, you should be spending a lot of time networking because statistically you are much more likely to find a position. Now, does that mean you should 
stop applying jobs online? Of course not. You should continually apply for jobs online as that does work and it has been proven to work. But just going down to the straight facts, it's really just important to take advantage of all the networking opportunities we have available to us, especially with something like LinkedIn, where we don't have to go to a networking event per se with a, and wear a name tag to network with people. We can do that all online, which is really, really great. But even the flip gears for a second, if we want to talk so much about networking, we also do want to address the job searching aspect of LinkedIn. So there is a job searching area that we'll talk about a little later, but there are over 20 million jobs on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is slowly becoming or a fan favorite of employers to post their jobs first and foremost. Now, this doesn't mean that employers are only going to post on LinkedIn. Employers are going to post all across the board, all those job websites, everywhere they can because that's how they get the most people apply for their positions. But LinkedIn is where they're finding the most qualified and prepared applicants for those positions. So they're really enjoying LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is gonna be a great place to job search uh, for job seekers too. We'll talk about why that would be so great. And even when I take this step further, you know, let's say you're not really into the whole idea of networking. It's not something that you feel comfortable with. Maybe you're not comfortable with learning this whole other skill this late in your career. Who knows? That's okay. Let's talk about another reason why LinkedIn is so important for job searching alone. Right here, we can see that this study uh, has been done. And what this study did is they took about, you can see, 24,000 or so fictitious resumes, and they gave each of these resumes, you know, you can see each bar there, some had no LinkedIn profile, some had a very bare bones or skeleton LinkedIn profile, and some had a very comprehensive LinkedIn profile. And what they did is they submitted these resumes across the board, across entry, mid and managerial level positions in all kinds of fields. And they tracked how much, what kind of responses these resumes with these, with these varying degrees of LinkedIn profiles received attached to them. And we can see that across the board in those darker blue bars and each set there, those comprehensive LinkedIn profiles on those resumes had a higher callback rate than all the other areas combined. Um, or not combined, but almost combined, I should say. But it just goes to show that simply just having a comprehensive LinkedIn profile filled out, updated, maintained, gets you a higher chance of get hearing back from an employer, which is a very common complaint I hear in my workshops or from people I talk to saying, you know, I'm not hearing back from employers. Well, having a LinkedIn account can help that significantly with that. Another interesting statistic that you might notice is that those middle bars, the bare bones LinkedIn profiles actually performed worse than not having a LinkedIn profile at all. So it really just goes to the show why I chose the title of this workshop to be building and maintaining a LinkedIn profile because it is extremely important to not only have a LinkedIn profile, but to keep it updated and fill it out. Many people make this mistake across all levels of career and education where they're told to make a LinkedIn account for whatever reason from whatever authority type figure you know for college students or younger people it could be a teacher or professor for working adults it could be their supervisors or their company and even in this case you know me telling you all how important LinkedIn is a lot of people get that first step down where they say okay LinkedIn's important I should make an account but don't continue with those steps and they leave their LinkedIn profile uh, to be after they have fulfilled its purpose. Maybe, you know, that college student gets a job, that company employee, you know, moves on from another job, or the person or you all listening now gets a job because of this LinkedIn account. And then you leave it alone, which is the worst thing you can do. Because let's say you use LinkedIn to get a job, and you get a job, and that's great, but then you don't touch it. Maybe you work that job for three, four, five years even. Maybe now it's all time to get another job, or whatever happens again. And now your LinkedIn profile is three, four, or five years old. And now you have to do all this work once again, practically almost rebuilding the profile again, because you never just wanted to update it consistently throughout your time at your job. So you really want to, you know, think of this LinkedIn profile as a living, breathing part of your professional self, if you will. It's something that should be constantly maintained in some way or another, because it's always going to be important and it's only going to grow in importance as you move throughout your career and as time goes on. Uh, in today's interconnected world. So you certainly, certainly, certainly want to fill out your profile and maintain your profile. And we'll talk about some things today that can be helpful for that maintenance. So let's pop back to LinkedIn platform real quick. We have one more, a couple more things I should say 
uh, before we actually dive into how the website here works. For one, practically speaking, how do we use LinkedIn Profile? Because I have mentioned, you know, this should be a living briefing uh, website that should be a part of your, you know, person. But how would we use it for our job search specifically? Well, one of the main ways we want to use it is adding the LinkedIn Profile URL to uh, our resume. So we hop over to the profile real quick. We'll hop back to the homepage in just a second. What you see right here at the top, the URL or the address bar right here, this link, linkedin.com slash in slash nickbtill slash, we want to put that into our resume, into our header, where our name, our contact information, like our email and phone number, and things of that nature go. Because, as we saw with this study, simply having that in your resume is going to give you that extra chance, that higher chance of getting a callback from an employer. So we certainly want to have that in there. And that's the main practical use of a LinkedIn profile. Now, some other uses of a LinkedIn profile that we can use is, for one, any relationships we have now that are professional, um, we want to maintain those. So maybe you just left a job or got laid off or whatever may have happened and you don't really exactly talk to your coworkers on you know, social media like Facebook or Twitter or you don't text them or call them every day as you most people probably won't. Um, but maybe you can keep those relationships alive on LinkedIn and maybe those relationships can be beneficial either way down the line, which is something we definitely want to take a hold of. You know, we want to use all the tools at our, uh, our fingertips today of all these social media sites and the way we can always stay connected and that should not stop at our pers or professional life, I should say. Um, it should continue on our professional life, and even further so, if I think. Another great reason to have a LinkedIn account and to use it is when it comes to job fairs and networking events. Again, the same idea is that maybe if you go to a job fair or a networking event and talk to a few people there, you know you might not give them your personal cell number or your personal email. Um, you might have a business card, but maybe you don't have business cards. You know, how else would you stay in touch with those people or, you know, keep asking those people questions without something like a LinkedIn profile? Again, I think people are going to be more willing to connect with you on a site like LinkedIn, where this is what its whole purpose is, than to, you know, say, hey, here's my phone number or here's my email, you know, email me whenever you want. And I think LinkedIn has the benefit of serving as that medium of communication for many people when it comes to those certain kinds of events where you're meeting people professionally for the first time. So those are some practical uses of the LinkedIn profile I do like to go over before we actually dive in to the profile and the website itself. All right, so with that underway, let's actually go work through this website. So we're gonna start with the homepage here before we actually move on to the profile, the big kahuna of what we're talking about today. So when you log into your LinkedIn profile, it should look something like this. Now, if you just start to create a profile, if you've just recently created a profile, it's not gonna look this filled out because you'll have to you know, build up your own profile. You'll have to add connections or friends as we discussed before um, and do a mother, another of other things. But as your profile grows and expands and as you grow and expand use it, it will end up looking like this at some point. And we see that this profile, this not profile, this page, I should say, looks fairly familiar to how Facebook in many ways looks. You know, it's not exactly the same in its design, but the functionality, as we'll see in just a second, is going to be very, very similar. So if you are someone who uses Facebook, for example, LinkedIn should be pretty easy to understand. If you're not one to use social media, but you do want to dive into uh, LinkedIn, um, definitely, you know, think about either A, getting a Facebook and becoming familiar with that, you know, having your friends and family help you with understanding that, or dive into LinkedIn right away and, you know, use this workshop as a talking point or as a helping point as you build your LinkedIn profile. Luckily, this will be pre-recorded, so you can always pause and play and pause and play as you see fit as you're building your profile. But let's talk about each of the functionality pieces here. So over here on the left, the first thing I go over is this little LinkedIn symbol and this search bar. So the search bar to go first, will act like any search bar. You can search up names of people or companies or positions or anything. It's gonna act as a general sort of search bar for this website. You can really search anything in that search bar. This LinkedIn symbol is gonna serve its own purpose too. It's not just there for aesthetic purposes. You can see my little cursor turns into a little hand there to show that it is in fact a link. Essentially what this is going to serve as is a home button and refresh button. So if I press it right now, you can see my page refreshes there and now it gives me a different sort of viewing panel here. If I were to go to another 
page on the website real quick, I can click right here. And it's going to serve the same purpose as this home button we see right over here. So it is a helpful thing to keep in the back of your mind as you're going through the website. Again, the home button will serve as a home button to this website, this page here. This is the home page, if you will. It's something you want to take advantage of if you, you know, want to help navigate yourself around the website. These three, these couple sections here we'll go over a little bit later as I like to work backwards on these ones as I go through the profile because I think that makes a little more sense after you understand how the profile works before you hop into some of these areas as well. This me tab is going to be a drop down arrow which is dissimilar uh, across these other areas. This will have some settings in here and ways you can look at your own profile in a further detail. Right here, this uh, ad here is always going to be there. It might not be the same ad every time, but that will just be an advertisement. We can see right here, it says ad uh, to tell you that it is an advertisement. Over here, we have a nice little profile box. That's gonna be a little snapshot of your profile. Um, we'll use this a little bit later, especially with this tracking information you might see here. Um, so don't pay too much attention right now. But the main thing I'd like to point out is that clicking on your name or your picture here will take you directly to your profile. So as opposed to going over here to me, Clicking that drop down arrow and pressing view profile, we can simply just click right over here. Next, we have the posting area here, this little box right here. So we can write text posts, we can write, we can upload pictures or videos or documents. We can also write articles, which is an interesting tool on LinkedIn to use as well. So, article writing is very interesting. You know, if there's anything you feel strongly about or anything you feel like you are a subject matter expert in or anything of that accord, now, feel free to write an article about it. It's definitely something that's going to boost your foot traffic on your profile, something very important we'll talk about later. And it's a very good way to demonstrate your knowledge to other job seekers, employers, and interviewers alike. So, you know, really look into how this works. You can see you can add in a nice little background photo. You'll have a title right here. You can add some more stuff here as well as adding images. There's some tools up here to use for you. So definitely look into using that article writing thing. So that'll be very different than just writing a basic post as you might see in this top four sections here. Next, we have a news sections. Now, of course, given the time right now, this is a special news section. We usually just see this news section right down here called today's news and views. And this news section is pretty interesting as it's not just a link to an article. If we click on one of these uh, article discussions here, we can see that an editor on LinkedIn actually gave you a little snippet or a little summary of what the story is going to be about. And they also have pics for people reacting to the story. Now, the interesting thing is that usually when you see some of these stories here is it's not always going to be the same article. We can see that these two people share this article from fastcompany.com. This person didn't even share an article, but still talk about the same uh, piece of information. This gentleman here shared a different version of that same story. So it's not always going to be the same exact thing. So it's a great way to gain different perspectives on the same sort of topic, not just getting one source of information, rather getting uh, multiple sources of information. And these news sections won't be specific to you. They're not going to be about your own field or anything like that. These are just going to be general news stories that are going to be important. Now, sometimes they are more job related. Sometimes they're just generally news stories. It's a good mix of the two. It kind of depends on the day and the time, I guess you can say. And I would recommend, you know, going through this section, you know, just about every day. Like I said, typically there is at least one uh, job searching related item there, probably one or two in most cases. So I would recommend, you know, keeping tabs on that and how to use that quite a bit. Finally, we have the news feed section right down here. So if I scroll down, you can see that this place in the middle starts to continue scrolling down. This is where you can see all our news feeds. So people who are connections, there's a nice video of a cat jumping for a thing. It's not adorable. Um, anyone who we might be connected with or anything they might be connected with, stories and advertisements and pages and things of that nature. And you certainly want to spend some time once you get more comfortable with your LinkedIn profile scrolling through here and seeing what your connections are talking about, any sort of trigger events or anniversaries like my connection fun here, you know, any sort of updates from pages or things you follow. Uh, so you definitely want to pay a lot of attention to this. And what's great about this uh, newsfeed section here is that you can sort it by the top rated stories from the past times or most recent. So if I click right here, 
we'll see that now I'm sorting by recent and now everything's gonna be within the past couple, you know, minutes or hours or days. This one's from about 14 minutes ago. Here we have one from 23 minutes ago. So you definitely want to think about how you want to view things. Oh, there's the cat again. Um, as well as looking for other jobs, you know, rather than just going to the job section, it will actually uh, tell you some stuff right here and there. So this is a very important aspect of the website. You know, certainly there might be some, you know, stuff that doesn't apply to you. That's okay. That's not really the purpose of it. You just want to have some things that are important content from you. The other great thing is that LinkedIn has a lot of learning opportunities as well. You know, there's a lot of pages and people you can follow where you can actually learn things from them. Uh, the thing I often say is that a lot of my continued knowledge of resume writing and the interviewing world and even things like LinkedIn themselves come from LinkedIn. It comes from just reading some of these stories over here, following certain people that I read their information about, their, their suggestions. There's a whole lot of information to be taken advantage of LinkedIn. So if you felt like you're not as comfortable with all these job searching aspects, especially if this is your first time job searching in you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 20 onward, you know, definitely use LinkedIn for that purpose alone. Definitely have it with you uh, to read through. So that's the home page in a nutshell. Like I said, we're going to circle back to these sections a little bit later once we go through the profile, but that is the home page right there in a nutshell. So with that, let's go over here. We can click on my name here and we'll go to my profile. So this is the meat of the LinkedIn discussion we'll have today. The majority of what we'll talk about rests on the profile itself. And like with the homepage, we can see that this profile, it looks very similar to a Facebook profile um, and how that is all structured. So let's go break this down and see how we want to either build or edit this profile. We'll go down piece by piece here. One thing I'll say before I get started is you can see that each of these sections sort of have their own little box. So you can see this profile box right here. We can see another box right here, so on and so forth. When it comes to editing your profile, you edit per box. So if you see this little pencil icon that exists in each of these boxes or so, that pencil icon refers to everything within this box it's in. So this pencil icon right here is going to edit all the information you find within this box. If we go down here for the about section, this pencil icon is going to edit this box. If we go down to my experience section, again, the pencil section is going to edit here in this box. So keep that in mind, there isn't really one general edit button per se, it's more so piece by piece, so it segments it for you nicely if you're not having to go through one giant page rather than breaking up in smaller bite-sized pieces, if you will. So let's kind of break every part of this down. The first thing I like to go over is right here at the top is this little banner photo area right here. Now I have a personalized banner that I built for myself uh, about what I am. Now that's probably not typical for most people. It is something you can look into, but not something I'll exactly go over today because that gets a little more complicated with graphic design and things of that nature. So we want to avoid that discussion today. What do we want to put in here? Because when you build your profile, you will notice, or if you haven't changed it yet, this will just be a static blue background. And we really do want to fill this section out with a picture because otherwise it's going to look ever so slightly empty and not exactly full or you know nice enough it doesn't have that aesthetic appeal to it that we really want to have so what we can we put in here well ideally we're going to put a picture in here that reinforces what we do in our career reinforces what kind of skills and qualifications we have so for example one of the easy examples I always give is imagine a teacher on LinkedIn. You know, they may have a picture of a classroom or textbooks or a chalkboard or a whiteboard. You know, tools and images that make you think, okay, this person is a teacher. Think of maybe like a chef. They might have pictures of a kitchen or, you know, dishes they serve or whatever it might be. A healthcare professional might have, you know, pictures of healthcare tools such as stethoscopes and and things of that nature. So all those things reinforce what those people do. And that really is the best idea as how to do that. Now, what kind of pictures work? We can get some sort of pictures here. Well, past taking them yourselves, a website I really like to recommend is called pexels.com. And pexels.com is a great website to get free stock images taken by real photographers on here. So just for example, let's say you were an accountant. For example so we can just type in accounting here or even just accountant down here 
And we see we get some images of, you know, number sheets and bookkeeping things and some more money related items here. So maybe an accountant might be using his LinkedIn profile or their LinkedIn profile, I should say. Maybe they like this picture a lot. They think it conveys what they do in their work or this picture or that picture. You know, they can simply just click on this and decide to download that and add that into their profile as a their background picture. We even take this a step further with another example. Let's, you know, let's try trucking, for example, uh, for maybe truck drivers or just general drivers. Give it a second to load here. As of the nature of technology, sometimes it takes a little while, but that's okay. There we go. So again, even something like this, indicating that you do drive a truck or here, or even some of these other ones too. You know, forklift driving. Here's one of a great example for forklift drivers. You know, there's a whole lot of different ideas you can play around with this website to get, you know, ideas for your own profile. So you definitely want to look into this Pexels website if you're not sure what kind of picture you may want to put in there. Now, let's say you're in a position where, you know, it's not that straightforward. You're in a very general position or a general kind of field. Then maybe just having a simple keyword isn't as simple for you. What could you put in there? Well, a good fail safe is always to, you know, type in or use skylines or buildings or anything like this. So, you know, that's also a nice step in because it just fills out the profile nicely. And ideally this can be, you know, images of where you're from. So for example, I used to live in Philly for a time. A lot of my friends who still live and work in Philly have the Philly skyline as their um, banner photo. Maybe in our case, that could be the Bethlehem Steel in many cases, or the Allentown skyline in many cases as well. But even then, you know, just a general skyline. And the reason why I'm saying this just fills out the profile. It makes it a little look more complete than if it was just that blank blue background there. Because people who use LinkedIn to screen or job search for their employers, for their offices, for their uh, companies, I should say, are going to know that that blue background is the generic LinkedIn background and knows that you know you didn't fill out more than that. So I do highly recommend having some sort of background photo in there. And I recommend Pexels because I think it does have a lot of great websites or a lot of great pictures, I should say, on this website to use from. Now you don't have to use Pexels, it's just simply a recommendation that I make because of the, you know, the quality nature of many of these photos you can use here. All right, and speaking of pictures, the next picture we're gonna talk about is your profile picture. When you see it right in this little circle, you can see me, um, and that is ever so important when it comes to the profile. Believe it or not, recruiters spend about a fifth of their time, 20% of their time on a LinkedIn profile solely looking at this profile picture, which may sound kind of silly, but it is ever so important because this is their, you know, really their first impression of who you are with your demeanor, with the way you dress, the way you carry yourself. You know, this is the first idea. And some people might make, you know, those further assumptions, you know, that person looks nice or, or not nice or, you know, professional or unprofessional. So it ever, is ever so important to have a high quality, you know, professional profile picture. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go to some sort of photography center like a Christmas City Studios, for example, and pay the highest price for the highest quality definition picture you can possibly get with someone who has a real DSLR camera. No, your smartphone camera will work just fine. The main key of it is how you look in it and how it's taken. First and foremost, how you look in it, you wanna be professionally dressed. Now this can be, have a lot of different words. Now, of course, I usually wear a suit to work, so I'm wearing a suit. In many cases, that's what many of you might wear is that business professional dress. But professional dress can mean a lot of different things. Again, to circle back to my past two examples, a chef in his profile picture, their profile picture might wear a chef's coat. A nurse in their profile picture might wear their scrubs. And both those things are appropriate because that's what they wear in their career. You know, I've seen pic uh, profiles of welders who have their, you know, welding helmet in their hand next to them when they have their profile picture taken or they're in their, you know, welding uh, jumpsuit for whatever they're working in. So professional dress can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So you do wear a specific type of uniform for your job, you know, feel free to include that in your profile picture. It further reinforces what you do. If your uniform is more nebulous or you don't really have a uniform per se, I would still recommend a business professional dress, you know, suit and tie, uh, 
nice dress and blazer, nice blouse and skirt, uh, collared shirt at least, you know, with a blazer, something akin to that, something that reinforces what you do uh, more so in your career again. And you really wanna make sure that when it comes to the picture is that you're not taking yourself. This shouldn't be, and I do not like this word, but this shouldn't be a selfie. You should have someone else take it of you, whether it's on your phone or you're getting a camera work done or whatever it might be. Someone other than you should take it because it's very obvious when you're taking, you're the one taking it entirely on your own. So you really want to make sure that you aren't doing that, that you want to make sure that it is a nice and professional picture. The other thing that it is going to be a headshot. You can see in this uh, profile picture here that I'm only taking up, or I'm taking up the majority of the frame. It's not a full body shot. It's not a close up of my face or anything like that. It's a good I, rough estimate of, of me, essentially. That's really the main idea. And this should include you with pictures of family or friends or pets or anything, you know, just you. Again, they're going to hire you. They're only looking at your profile to look at you. So it should only be you in this profile picture right then and there. Next in this little box here, we have the name here. Now, why is it silly go over name? Well, one thing I want to mention is that you shouldn't have any sort of nickname in here. Now, my full name is Nicholas, as you can see right here. But I have it as Nick right here because that's what most people tend to call me. That's not the kind of nickname I'm exactly talking about. I'm more so talking about the nicknames you might have seen before on any other kind of website like this or resumes or so on and so forth. Things like Java Guru or Truck Driving Extraordinaire. You know, things of that nature are a little silly. And on a website that's supposed to be wholly professional, it seems a little odd uh, for it to have it on there. So keep your profile entirely professional. Don't use anything of that nature in your name or anywhere else. Especially in this headline section here, this little body of text I'm highlighting right now, where mine says, Workshop Facilitator Instructor at P.A. Crilangalia Valley, Helping Job Seekers Find Meaningful Careers. We don't want any sort of those silly nicknames in here. What do we want to put in here, though? What would I put in here if I wasn't currently working? Because obviously right now I do have my title in here, what I do in my career. But what would I put in there if I wasn't working? Well... I might actually put in things like you might see right here, human resources professional, workforce development, public speaker, organizational development, trainer, onboarding, recruiting, you know, keywords that circle back to my skills and what I do in my career. That's what I would put in there if I wasn't currently working at CareerLink. Because when, I, when someone comes to my profile, I want them to get a good idea in as short as detail as possible as to what kind of person they're looking at. Are they looking at a resume writer? Are they looking at a chef? Are they looking at a nurse? Are they looking at a phlebotomist? Are they looking at a welder? You know, who, what kind of person are you looking at? That's really what I want to put in this area right here. A lot of people also like to put, you know, something akin to seeking new opportunities or in between opportunities or looking for a new role. I would just caution having that by itself. I would make sure that you have what are those other job related keywords in there with it? Because again, your LinkedIn profile is supposed to be a self marketing tool of sorts. It's supposed to give an idea of a almost like a sales aspect. You're almost, you know, like a resume, like selling yourself to an employer to see if they're going to bring you in for an interview. So you want to make sure that you're always demonstrating uh, this value to yourself and this value to what you are and who you are and what you can do. So make sure you don't leave that headline section alone with just the looking for a new opportunity bit there. Make sure you talk about some other keywords that are more akin to you. And then there's some other stuff here on the sides and below here that we won't exactly go over in detail that you can more so peruse uh, as your own right here. Next here we have an about section or a summary section as it might want to call it. And if we click this see more button here, we can see my entire about section. Now for the, today's purposes, I want to ask to, to ignore this bottom section here. This bottom section goes over all of the workshops I teach or have taught and is very, very specific to me. So don't include that in our line of uh, discussion here. Mainly focus on these top two paragraphs right here. Now what is this about section supposed to be about? Well, this is supposed to be a general summary of who you are as a person. If this was, you know, the idea, this ex this idea is expanded upon within this summary. We can see here that I'm talking about my career, what I'm doing in my job, uh, some personal philosophies of how I like to work my job, and all of that fun stuff there. 
And it's just a quick uh, snapshot and idea of what kind of uh, professional I am again. You know, further developing on that headline we saw earlier. And this section really shouldn't be too, too long. Again, if we're ignoring that bottom section, how long would this section typically be? Maybe one more paragraph of this length, and that'd probably be about it. We want to keep it pretty concise. We want to have it almost as like an appetizer for someone to read and to want to read more of, to want to find out more information about me in this case as a professional. Now, why is that the case? Why should we not use the full 2,000 word, 2,000 character limit, I should say, that LinkedIn offers us? Well, let's play a scenario and say we did do that. Let's say we filled out every single last detail we possibly could in this about section. Let's say then an employer, a recruiter, an interviewer, a hiring manager, they come to our LinkedIn profile and they read all 2,000 of those characters. Unlikely, but let's say that does happen. Maybe that recruiter then decides, you know what, Nick seems great, but after reading all of that, I think I don't need to talk to him. I think I'm going to look elsewhere for my talent. And now because I gave that person everything, I never got the chance to adequately defend myself or explain a lot of those other points um, that she or he read through uh, on the LinkedIn profile. So we want to give, again, enough to serve them some, almost like an appetizer. We want to leave them almost wanting more. Because in very many ways, like I said, LinkedIn is a marketing tool. It is a sales tool in many different ways. So we definitely want to use it in that mindset. Another way to think about this about section is think about the times interviewers have asked you, tell me about yourself. Or they say, you know, give me information about yourself. Let me tell me a little more about yourself. The answer to that question is going to be very similar to what you put in here. You want to give them a good idea, a good snapshot of who you are, what you've done, where your skills are, what your work philosophies are, all that fun stuff there. And don't be afraid to add a little personality, a little character to this. I mean, of course, remain professional when going through this, but don't be afraid to add a little bit of your own personality. I mean, that's what I do here with my little fish analogy in my section right down there. All right, we'll keep going down here then. This little dashboard area, we're going to go over a little bit later. As you can see here, it is private to us, but we'll explain what this dashboard's purpose is after we go through everything else. Next, you can see your activity. So we can see some of the things I've done here. So we click see all here. It's going to show me all my activity. So what I like, you know, anything I post, else other things I liked, so on and so forth. So it's a great way to go back and, you know, if you lost something, maybe you, there's a post or a story that you really wanted to remember and you liked it, you can go into the activity section and see what you were doing. The main reason why we want to take this into account is to remind ourselves that anyone can view this activity. Anyone can see what I've been doing. So we don't want to go around and get into, into arguments with people or posting things that might not be wholly professional or anything of that nature because, again, Let's say I call someone an idiot on you know, LinkedIn for whatever reason. Maybe I think they're a bad resume writer. I wouldn't do that. I'm a very nice person. <laughs> um, let's say I do do that. And a recruiter sees that and they say, hmm, Nick is a very you know, mean, rude person. He doesn't have that really that professional demeanor online. What makes me think he's going to have it if I bring him in for an interview? Probably not in that case. So that recruiter can see all my activity and say, well... I'm not going to interview Nick. I'm not going to hire Nick because of, you know, what he has said or what he's done on LinkedIn. So we want to be very professional LinkedIn at all times. We don't want to get into, you know, silly arguments or arguments of any nature, um, especially ones that are politically or religiously or oriented, especially with this day. If our political discourse of the day, we definitely want to avoid something akin to that. All right. So next we have the main area of our section, the main viewing area of our profile is the experience section, the work experience section. And this section should be very reminiscent of a resume. We can see right here that this looks a lot like how a resume is going to look, you know, job title, company name, the dates, and then bolded points about how we want to describe our work. And we see that, you know, there's a lot more jobs I might typically include on a resume, you know, typically as well, these two restaurant jobs aren't on my physical resume, but they are on my LinkedIn profile. Now, why is that the case? Well, think of how a physical resume works. You know, if you've watched the the Resume Writing 101 uh, workshop, you know that I said in that workshop that your resume should be about one to two pages. 
It should only include the last 10 to 15 years of work experience and should only be relevant and recent information about your professional life. And you really can't expand on a lot of the things in each job. You can't write every last detail you did per job. You can't go and talk about every last thing you did in your career. It has to be a good snippet, a good highlight reel of what you've done. LinkedIn is like that without a lot of those restrictions. You can and in fact are encouraged to include more than the past you know, 10 to 15 years of work experience on your profile as it gives a sort of narrative as to how your career has panned out. Um, you can write a lot more information on each of those jobs. We see here if I click this little see more button here, you know, that is significantly more information than I would write on a resume. But since LinkedIn is a live, living, breathing profile, I can put that in there. And again, you could, I went back and wrote and added in jobs that I typically wouldn't add on my resume because it is important. It is helpful to give an idea of where my, you know, customer service background sort of come from with this relationship of HR and workforce development. So it is extremely helpful to have this LinkedIn profile here and there. So we definitely want to, you know, look into filling this out quite a bit. I'll recommend if you have a resume with you or you wrote a resume, you know, definitely use that as sort of your template for writing this LinkedIn profile here. And the other thing I'd like to mention is a nice little trick we can use with the LinkedIn experience section here. So this is the most technical I'm going to get in this workshop. So if you do understand this, you'll understand everything else. But I do like to go over this one last little bit here. LinkedIn, like any other social media site, is based off of an algorithm for how it works. And what that means in the simplest terms is that the more active someone is on a social media platform, the more people are going to see their activity. So if you think, for example, if you have like a Facebook account, the people you're seeing on Facebook on the, all the time are probably the same people who are constantly posting things. LinkedIn's gonna work in the same way. The more active you are, the more things you post, comment, like, share on, whatever it might be, the more people are likely going to see that post. And like I mentioned earlier, we want that foot traffic because that leads recruiters and hiring managers and people who can hire us into their viewpoint. So we definitely want to be active on the profile with all those things in mind, like sharing posts, writing posts, uh, commenting, liking, things of that nature. Another thing we can do to affect that activity, affect that foot traffic is having a current position. So people who have a current position on LinkedIn platform uh, have a higher viewership, have higher vis visibility than people who do not. So with me having my job still current, it ha ends in this present right here, gives me uh, more visibility than someone who might not have that. Now, how can we do that if we're not currently working? Well, what we can do is create a position that indicates what we want to do in our career. So the job titles can be the potential job titles you're looking into. The company would be seeking new role in blank field or as blank position. And you'll actually be quite surprised as to how many people end up doing this. And then the section here, the detail section here, is we can write about general transferable skills, marketable skills that would help us in succeeding in this kind of role or in these kinds of roles. And again, simply having that current with quote unquote position air marks there would help us with our visibility of our profile. And we're telling the entire truth, we are looking for this kind of role. And it gives the indicator to anyone looking at our profile as saying, hey, you know, we are looking for this kind of position. So it is beneficial for a number of other reasons other than what I just said. Is that something you have to do if you're not currently working? No, it's just another neat idea that if you wanna try it out, you know, feel free to do so uh, in your profile. That is the experience section. As we saw here, one thing I do like to know is that you can see that each of my experience section bits here are delineated by a bullet point. You might hear a lot of people say, you know, write this as a narrative or write it in paragraphs. And that's something I wholly disagree with in many cases. And I think most other career experts are going to feel the same way. Recruiters, hiring managers, people who are hiring people, they're going to be familiar with this resume style of writing here with the bullet points under each job. It's something they're wholly familiar with. So 
I would recommend keeping it consistent with that and how they mostly prefer to review information about an applicant with this is through these bullet points. So I would recommend keeping it then and shut with that. And if you wanted to get a bullet point like this onto your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn doesn't actually have a way to add in your own bullet point. But what I would recommend doing is opening up a Word document or something like a Google Docs document, some sort of word processing software, adding a bullet point into that blank document, copying that bullet point by highlighting it or whatever it might be. So if I were in the document, I can copy and paste and then copy it into there. And just to give you a visual of what that looks like, you know, let's say I were to open up Word here. Or to type a new document in here. And maybe I were to bullet point. All I would do is copy this. Maybe I should write, probably write out some text first and might copy it better. Copy that. And if I were on my page, on my LinkedIn profile here, all I can do is simply copy and paste. And again, I would be doing this on the actual profile itself. So I would take that copy go up to here, go into my profile, and maybe I can go down here to show you what I mean, and simply copy and paste. Any spaces in here really shouldn't matter. Um, you do want it to be, you know, about one space away from that bullet point, but it should orient it just enough so it lines up with everything else. That's how you can possibly add a bullet point into your profile section there. Okay, so that's the experience section in a nutshell. Let's keep moving on now. Next, we have education and volunteer experience. These sections should be pretty straightforward. But just to go through them real quickly. When it comes to education, if you do have a formal education like a bachelor degree or an associate's degree or some other degree or certificate, you know the education section should work just fine for you. And you can include all of your education or just your highest level of education. You can see here that I only have my bachelor's degree here. I don't have my high school diploma or anything like that. Just my bachelor's degree is gonna serve just fine. I don't need to include every little single last piece of information. Now, if you're someone, for example, who has a very vast alumni network from your high school and you really wanna reach out to those people, perfectly fine to put that in there. No reason why you couldn't do that, but you don't really need to in many cases. Now, let's say you're someone who doesn't really have bachelor's or associate's degrees or anything like that, but you have a lot of certifications and or licenses. How can you input that information here? Well, we wouldn't exactly put it into this education section, but we will see a way just a bit later as to how we can possibly do that. Then we have the volunteer experience here. If you have volunteer experience or outreach work or community involvement, definitely, definitely, definitely put it in here. There's nothing that has more music to recruit ears in volunteer work or community involvement. So you certainly want to put all of that stuff in here to show that you are doing more in your career, doing more in your personal and professional life than just what your career or job entails. Okay. Next we have skills and endorsements. So skills on LinkedIn are skills like any other place, like you might put in your resume. We can see some of my top skills here, Microsoft Office, customer service and recruiting. If I were to click the show more button down here, we can see that LinkedIn separates this information out automatically. So whenever I put in a skill here, LinkedIn takes that skill and says, okay, well, human resources is an industry knowledge skill, or Prezi is a software that this person uses. Uh, presentation skills is an interpersonal skill. And then LinkedIn has another LinkedIn section down here for things it can't justify. But we see here, there's a lot of different examples of skills I might have. So, you know, core competencies I might do in my work, softwares or programs I might use, soft skills or interpersonal skills that it mentions here. And again, an other skills section here if it can't justify or doesn't recognize something like a software like Workday right there. And these skill sections are super important because it gives an idea not only of what skills you have, but it's also a chance for uh, people to endorse you or boast about your skills essentially. Because we see these numbers here, nine, eight, and three, and some other numbers right down here at the bottom. What do those numbers mean? Well, if I click on the number there, we can see that these people, these eight people, um, have endorsed me for this skill of customer service. Um, and that's a great thing to see because there's nothing better than you saying to yourself, um, 
hey, or you saying to an employer to say, hey, I have this great skill here, and then eight other people behind you saying, yes, Nick does have that skill, or yes, that person does have that skill. It's great to have reinforcements of what you're saying you have. So you really want to use this skills section to your benefit. And obviously this section with the endorsements is gonna come not as manually because you won't be able to put these endorsements in, but you'll find these endorsements will come and go, or come, I should say, not go, as you work through the LinkedIn platform. And even as you're getting started out, have your friends and family, your other close coworkers or so on endorse you. For example, this gentleman right here, one of my best friends for all of my life, you know, we endorse each other on LinkedIn when we both get on the platform because that's what we do. Endorsements will work very functionally similar to another section right below it called recommendations. So recommendations like a regular job recommendation work in the same way, except in this case, it's not a document or a piece of paper you hand into an employer. It is a living, breathing recommendation that anyone can see at any given time. So right now I don't have any recommendations, boohoo, but I have given one out. So we can see here, uh, Morgan, one of my colleagues at Careerlink, she's our social media person. She actually helped me build this workshop when we first created it almost a year ago. Um, and so I gave her a little recommendation. And Morgan, what happened is she actually got uh, an inbox saying, hey, Nick wrote you this recommendation. Would you want to put it on your profile? Morgan had to actually approve whether that uh, recommendation put on your profile. So I do get a lot of questions saying, well, what if you know someone writes a bad recommendation about me? What can I do about that? Well, you just say, no, I don't want it on my profile. You can take it away at any time or not put it on there at all. And with recommendations, we do want to, you know, it is nice to see them, but again, we want to remember that this is something that should be coming naturally and genuinely. We really don't want to beg people or hunt down people to write recommendations. You know, in this case, I wouldn't have friends or family put any recommendations in here because I want those things to be genuine for people who genuinely uh, felt I had that skill and not be biased in any sort of way about my skills there. Because it is a written format, we want to be very genuine, like I said, and I have a place of, you know, pure saying, yes, I do want to endorse Nick for this skill here for your recommendation. And even if LinkedIn says, you know, ask for recommendations, I would recommend just having these things come naturally. You know, you, it's appropriate to ask for recommendations in any sense of the word, but for me personally, I do like having these things be a natural thing. So whenever I get my recommendations, if I do get them, That'll be great to see them, but until then, I'm not going to really hunt down or beg people to, you know, recommend me for X, Y, and Z things. Accomplishments is a sort of catch-all section that we'll see in just a second here. I'm using it for organizations I'm involved with, but there's a lot of different reasons as to why you can use accomplishments. And then right down here at the bottom, we have an interest section, and you can use this to use a lot of different things. You can use it to follow companies you may be interested in, different organizations you're involved with and any other things here. So if you are someone who is looking into working at LVHN or ArtsQuest or St. Luke's, you definitely want to follow them in those cases on their LinkedIn platform because you will see new jobs, you'll see stories about them, you'll see updates, things that are going to be important should you get an interview or a screening with those companies. So you definitely want to be in the know, turn on the alerts for them and Always be aware of when they're going to be showing you that information. And that is about the profile in a nutshell. We have a few other things to go over, but that is essentially how we want to make the profile look. And that was a lot to go through, and that's why the handout attached with this course is going to go over all that again in detail. And that handout will go over everything I will say or would have said in this workshop. So you're saying to yourself, well, Nick, this is all great but this seems like a lot. Not only can you pause and play this video, like I mentioned, but you could also read through my notes in that uh, extensive eight page handout or so. Some other minor things we're gonna go over is first and foremost, this add profile section tool right down here. This add profile section tool is going to be a helpful tool for further conveying information about our profile. So we click right here, we can see that there's some other sections we can add in here, particularly licenses and certifications, which is the sections I mentioned earlier as to how we can show that stuff. So we have someone who, maybe you don't have a lot of traditional education, but you have a lot of licenses or certifications, you can simply add a section right down here. 
I also mentioned that accomplishments is sort of a catch-all section for a lot of different things. So for publications, patents, courses, projects, awards, test scores, languages, organizations like I use it for. There's a lot of different reasons as to why you may want to use this accomplishments section. So think of ways you can use that profile section tool here, because this is going to be helpful for further developing your own profile. Next, we want to look at this other section up here where it says edit public profile and URL. So if we click on that text right there, it's going to bring us to a new tab. And on this new tab, there are a lot of visibility options and content options and things of that nature as you go down here, kind of give you another different view of your profile. But the main reason why we're here is for this thing right here in the corner to edit your custom URL. Again, the URL is this piece of information right up here that we're going to put in the header of our resume. And when you first create this profile, it's not going to look nice and neat how mine looks here. It's going to have a bunch of numbers at the end of it. And we don't want those numbers on our resume or wherever else we share that profile because we want it to look very professional. So what we want to do is go into that section there, click this little pencil icon and change that last little bit there. Take all the numbers or the dashes or anything like that. Just make it your first and last name. If you find that you're someone with a more generic name, um, maybe like a Sam Smith, for example, you know, maybe try adding your middle name in there to make it more specific to you. And we can always save and go back to our profile and have our LinkedIn account be appropriate as it should be. And lastly, this tool right here is add a profile in another language. If we click on that right there, we can see here that we can add another profile in a different language if we are bilingual. And LinkedIn will actually, you know, match, you know, your profile to a viewer's language profile. So if you're applying for a bilingual position or maybe you're even applying for a job in another country at some point in the future where you speak the language of that country, you can have them look at your language speaking profiles. So maybe you're fluent in French, for example. Maybe you know, a couple years in the line, you're going to apply for a job at a French company within France. You can simply choose that language in here, like French here, and recreate your profile in that language. Now, I don't speak a lot of, I don't speak any other language. You know, I do speak a little bit of French, je parle français parce que l'école, but not enough to be bilingual. So I've never fully tried this because I don't want to falsify any information about myself. But I do understand that it should essentially recreate the profile and you'll just have to do some quick translation edits or changes because, you know, translations through uh, technology aren't always going to be perfect. And those are the main tools of the profile we do want to go over as well. Some other things I want to go over is we go back down here to the dashboard, dashboard section here. I do like to go over this in just a quick highlight. So this dashboard, like I mentioned, is private to you. Only you are going to see this if I were to go on to your profile right now, I cannot see his information. So what do these numbers each mean? Well, first of all, the 66 number, who viewed my profile? So let's click on that. And we see that LinkedIn is going to give us a good idea of the 66 people who viewed my profile within the last 90 days or three months or so. LinkedIn is also going to give me a breakdown of those 90 days. So we can see here around the 4th of February, I had a lot of views. I dipped back down in the 18th, and then I had a nice sort of regular sort of up and down flow from there on out. We see here down below, it's giving me some idea of who's actually viewing my profile. Now, LinkedIn's only going to give you so many people per sort of view section, if you will. We can see it says unlock the rest with premium. LinkedIn premium is LinkedIn's monthly subscription service that is very, very beneficial. The reason why I haven't mentioned it up until this point, you might have saw this little try premium free for free at one point during the workshop already is that it is a paid service. And while it is very helpful for a lot of different reasons, it is a little exorbitant for its purpose. I think it is something like $30 a month at its cheapest. And so I don't really like to recommend paid services to people who aren't currently working. So I wouldn't recommend, not that I wouldn't recommend using it, because like I said, it is very, very useful, but I'm personally not gonna recommend it because I don't think you exactly need it. Especially in this context, is with this context, it's going to tell you everyone specifically who looked at your profile, and how they got to that uh, viewing there. But we don't exactly need that because we can also see that right below in the middle here, it's going to show us some other information, you know, where people are working, um, so on and so here, what their job titles are, 
how they found me. So I don't exactly need to know specifically, because let's say I apply for a job at Amazon, and I get one of these things here that says, you know, one person works at Amazon. I can put two and two together and think to myself, well, they're clearly looking into my candidacy if that is showing up in my profile. So you could try out LinkedIn Premium for free if you wanted to. Just remember that you will have to pay for it after the fact unless you cancel it. Just be wary of that if you do try to use it for a month for free. But let's go back to the section here. The next little piece of information here is post views. So we can see here, if we click here, it's gonna take us to a similar window we saw beforehand, but now it's gonna take us specifically to our post. So this is gonna show you per post how many people got this post reach. This post reached about a thousand people. This post reached about 373 people. And you can see so on and so forth as to how your posts are doing. Now, why is this important to take note of? Why are we caring about all this tracking information? Well, let's say, you know, this post was fairly successful, reaching about a thousand people and 22 people, you know, liked it and commented on it, whatever it might have been. This was helpful for getting more foot traffic on my profile. And if I was job seeking, that's a very good thing for me to see because I want, you know, recruiters and hiring managers to come across my profile and hopefully, uh, you know, talk to me or shoot me a message saying, hey, I would really like to meet you and set up an interview. And so what I want to do is track why this post was so successful. You know, was this post a product of its time? Did I use some sort of hashtag or pound symbol right in there to connect this post to other people? How did I orient the post? What did I share? You know, why was this post so much more successful than this post? Well, this post was me sharing an article, no insight or anything, just me simply sharing it. This post was something I actually wrote. So it seems to, it seems to be the thought process there is saying, well, people are gonna be much more engaged with uh, content from LinkedIn members that they actually decide to write and not just share. And that's not to say that sharing information or sharing articles is a bad thing, but it shows out how one is more successful than the other. And this could be a great almost little game of back and forth you can play with yourself. You know, okay, my view shot up this way. Why did that happen? What can I do about it? And the same thing works with the profile views as well. Let's say you edit your profile one night and you go to bed for the night, log in the next morning, and you find out your profile views have shot up. What did you just do? What? How did you edit your profile to make all those views happen. These are the kind of games you want to play for yourself. Now, again, you don't have to get that particular with it. That is certainly kind of playing the game more so of LinkedIn. You don't have to do all of that. That's okay. But it is something to keep in mind, you know, as you go through uh, your LinkedIn uh, career, I guess you can say. Because um, LinkedIn does track just about everything and it has become helpful from time to time to time. So definitely look into some of these things, play around with this dashboard here, see how it works. The last number I'll talk about is the search appearances. It's probably the more abstract of the three numbers here, not as straightforward. So what is a search appearance? Well, in this case, 15 people, uh, 15 times my profile appeared in search results between you know those dates there. So someone searched up something that caused my profile to come up. Now they didn't necessarily look at my profile their profile simply came up in their search appearances, their search bar up here. So these things could have been things like career link or resume writing or interviewing or EDSI or Bethlehem, Pennsylvania or Allentown, Pennsylvania. You know, things that are associated with my profile and me are the reasons as to why uh, these search appearances came up. And just like before, we can see some other information where they're working from. So we get some people from the Navy and uh, nonprofit organization here, higher education, so on and so forth, and what they do. And again, if you're seeing a lot of recruiters looking at your profile, you know that's a good sign, or HR specialists, or so on and so forth. You know that's a good thing to see, because then you can put two tune together. Okay, people are looking into my candidacy, which is really ideal. So again, you know, with keywords, you know, if your keywords are coming up, or if they're getting a lot of people looking at your profile, what kind of things, what kind of changes did you just do? What kind of, you know, things did you just share on your profile there? Okay, one final thing I wanna go over before we hop off this uh, profile page here and work to the, our way to some of these other sections here 
is right down here on the bottom here. It says people also view these people here. Now this means that when someone views my profile, they also view Megan's or Caitlin's or Thomas's or Richard's or so on and so forth. Really the main reason I'm bringing your attention to this is to look at the numbers for each of these names. So Megan's a first right there. Thomas is second. Let's see if we can find a third. All right, no thirds here today, but third you might also see. Why are those numbers important? Well, those numbers indicate what degree of connection they are to you. So Megan is one of my coworkers at Carillink. She is a first degree connection. So that means I sent her a connection invitation. She sent one, she accepted it, and now we're first degree connections. Thomas here is a second degree connection. So that means that we share a mutual connection, but are not connected ourselves here. So I know someone who knows Thomas, Thomas knows someone who knows me. And a third degree connection would just be another degree of separation. So let's say Thomas was a third degree connection. I know someone who knows someone who knows Thomas. Thomas knows someone who knows someone who knows me. And then you might also see third plus. Third plus can be anywhere from fourth to 55th. So we're not really going to look into the third plus as much as the second and third. But why are we looking into the second and third degree connections? Well, let's say Thomas here, for example, let's say he was a owner or a manager at a Fortune 500 company I really wanted to work at, and I see a second behind his name. You know, all the whistles in my head just start going off, because that means that Thomas knows someone that I also know that I could probably reach out to that mutual friend of ours or connection of ours and say, hey, you know, you know Thomas. Is there any information you give about him? Can you maybe, you know, look into making a connection happen between the two of us? Can you pass on my resume? Can you let him know that I want to work for him? You know, we want to take advantage of the networking aspect that LinkedIn has to offer. Again, 85% of jobs are filled through networking, so we certainly want to uh, take advantage of all these numbers and things of that nature, especially when it comes to the jobs section up here. Many times on this jobs section, there could be some cases where uh, a connection information comes up here. So for example, let's see if I can find one here. Here, right here, at Amerisource Bergen, you know, two of my connections work there. I want to use those connections to say, hey, you know, for example, uh, Louis right here, you know, hey, Louis, I see you work there or you know someone there. Um, is there any way you can give me some information about that position? Is there any way you can, you know, connect me with an, a hiring manager, the recruiter, anything at all? So we definitely want to take advantage of that. And even in many cases, sometimes, you know, I don't know if I'll get lucky if I might click on a random thing here, but sometimes when you click on one of these, um, positions here, uh, let's see if they have it here. Okay, so this one doesn't have it, but sometimes you might have information here that has the uh, job posters profile attached to it. Uh, again, looks like I'm not exactly getting lucky today. That's okay. But essentially, you would see a little snapshot of the job posters profile right in there, um, and it would be a great way to see that. So again, if you see a job posters profile in there, and you see um, the sort of uh, information about this person's a secondary connection, this person's a third degree connection, so on and so forth. It could be a great way to reach out to those mutual connections you have and say, hey, you know, I really want to work for Sarah Smith who works at Jove Consulting. You know Sarah Smith. Could you possibly make a connection happen between the two of us? So we definitely want to take advantage of the LinkedIn platform and all the, uh, you know, less anonymity it gives us in a good way in this time. Usually less anonymity is a bad thing, but in this case it's going to be a very good thing because it gives us an ability to reach out to people we might not otherwise have an ability to reach out to. So we can see here uh, that LinkedIn is going to have a job searching aspect like any other people. We can see here I always do some test searches right here and there. I'm not really sure why that black screen happened there. <laughs> Um, we did some test searches here and some searches for some friends of mine who are looking for jobs as well. So you can search it up by, you know, the titles or the names of the companies or whatever, or in the certain sections like cities or state or zip codes or anything. You can see that LinkedIn will also remind you, you know, here's 35 new jobs for HR jobs in Philly or whatever it might be. So LinkedIn does have a great aspect to it about all these tools on there when it comes to job searching. Let's pop over some of these other sections here. So there's the My Network tab here. 
So my network tab is going to be a comprehensive look at everything with relating to your connections. So it has invitations up here, people connecting with you. One thing I will recommend is sometimes that you will get random connection uh, requests. Now, sometimes you may not know the person. Um, in many cases, I would recommend against accepting those people or sending connections out to those people. But we do want a lot of people to reach out to and ask help of on LinkedIn. We want to make sure that we know those people in some way or capacity or we have some sort of common connection with that person there. Um, so definitely make sure you are accepting connections to people you know or have some sort of common interest or connection with. Make sure it is beneficial to you and it's not just another person in your news feed you're never ever going to talk to. And there's ways to look at other connections you can possibly make. So you can see if you scroll down, it kind of separates in different sections. So this section is all about people who work for the same company I work for. And even then, you know, all these people work for the same company I do, but unless I have some sort of another reason, you know, the real reason, maybe I have to work together with some of these people on a project, I don't really feel the need to connect with them because I don't know them personally enough or I, their professional life doesn't impact my professional life uh, in a lot of regard. I also, also give us some other sections here. So for me, it gives me, you know, people from my alma mater up here. So again, if I knew any of these people, I could connect with them, but if I don't, that's okay as well. People who are in similar roles, so a lot of edu education or trainer type people for my case. People down here, people in my sort of area here. And then just some other people and general pages and things you can follow down here. So you do want to take advantage of this network page because it's going to give you a lot of different opportunities for following conversations or connecting with people or joining organizations or anything of that nature. So definitely take some time once you're more comfortable with the LinkedIn platform, go through this network section here and get some ideas of how this works. Next is the messaging tab. Now, I'm not going to click on that because I don't want you all to see my messages, but there is a little messaging sidebar down here, which I find you're probably going to get more use out of than the actual messaging tab itself. And really just the main thing I'll say about messaging is you think about messaging somewhere between a text message and an email. Your messages won't be as casual as a text message. But they won't be as structured as an email. You won't need to have a greeting and a signature every time. You can simply just have normal conversations back and forth with people on the platform. And lastly is notifications. So notifications is going to have a lot of different information bits related to it here. Um, you know, you can see some trigger events like happy birthdays or job starts. You can see posts people are sharing, um, trending news stories, search appearance information, profile views, comments on your app, on your posts and things of that nature. So definitely, you know, every day when you log into your LinkedIn profile, all the time when you do that, you know, check your notifications here, see if there's anything to respond to. Especially if someone does, you know, comment or like or whatever on one of your posts, make sure you're interacting with those people there. It looks like we got a new one. Look at that, funny enough. Um, you know, another person just reacted to my posts. You know, maybe I want to see who those people are reacting to my posts. You know, I want to engage with my social media. It is called social media for a purpose there. We have to be social on it. So definitely look into this notification section in a lot more detail. Okay, so that was LinkedIn in a rather large nutshell. But LinkedIn is a pretty comprehensive platform. We definitely want to use it in our career. Please, 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 you know, read through the handout attached to this workshop to get further information on the platform. And... Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call our helpline uh, available on our homepage, uh, and they could probably direct you to me, which I can answer any of your questions regarding the platform. But other than that, I hope this uh, little presentation helped you all out there. I hope the handout helps you guys out there. And as I always like to say, keep on keeping on, everyone. Stay safe and healthy.